All right, same win call. Impact, good shot. So what's up guys? So today uh, I just finished up a whole entire four day, uh, I guess class you could say, with Modern Day Sniper and Kaylin for the three days, well all four days, and then Phil came in for the, the fourth day. And just wanted to give you guys a good introduction on them, just see who they are and, and if it's something that kind of fits your mold if you're willing to go out and get some training. They travel all around to, to do some stuff like this. So I'll let them introduce themselves and also their company. So, Kalen. What's up, guys? I'm Kalen Wojcik, and uh, I'm one of the founding members of Modern Day Sniper, along with, with Phil Vallejo over here. And um, I've been at this for a while. Um, some of you guys probably know me from uh, my days when I was working at Magpul, running the Precision Rifle Division there, and um, then uh, kind of branched off and did my own thing. Um, eventually linked up with Phil. We did some work at Gunworks together, and um, now we're here at Modern Day Sniper, and uh, we're out here at our range, our home range in uh, Eastern Washington, which is just west of Yakima, and um, we're out here kind of on the edge of the foothills of the Cascade Mountains, and Duffy was badass enough to come out here and, and come train with us, and um, I'm just super glad to have you out here, man, and Phil coming out. It's like, it's badass. Yeah, super fun, man. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Phil Vallejo. Uh, come from the same background and, and cloth as Kalen, just different generations. And um, yeah, uh, I one of the uh, founders of uh, Modern Day Sniper. And, and really, uh, the, the, how it started is, you know, we were we were doing a podcast, and we just started wanted we wanted to talk about sniper stuff. Um, and uh, you know, not only did we want to talk about sniper stuff, but you know, it eventually evolved into being. Um, uh, you know the the art and mindfulness of being a precision rifleman, and I think uh, we we're able to you know um, indirectly reach out to different parts of the audience. You know that demographics. Yeah, demographics that really maybe they're not trying to be uh, snipers, but with technology nowadays and the, the awesome you know rifles and machining process that we have now. I mean rifles are super capable, and you know you don't need to be a sniper to own a precision rifle. You know so. Yeah. Um, you know, we were able to uh, find enthusiast hunters or relate to enthusiast hunters, uh, precision rifle competitors, and obviously, you know, our heart, uh, you know, lies with guys that um, are hunting two-legged critters. Yeah. yeah. The really the, the the you know the the genesis of this was was trying to create a source of information that you know had no bias as much as possible, right? And we know that that's really hard to do. Yeah. Um, we all like what we like, you know, we all kind of gravitate towards the things that we like, but we also have to remain open-minded. And that's part of what we want to do is create a source of information that people know that it's vetted information. It's coming from people that not only just do it here and there, but it's, it's a lifestyle that, that we live, right? So, yep. you know, I'm, I'm a mountain hunter. This is, this is the time of year that I'm like super happy because I get to go chase critters up in the mountains. But it's not something that, that, you know, I'm not taking the rifle out of the safe, you know, two weeks before I'm ready to go hunting. This is something that I do all year long, right? It's part of my lifestyle. It's what I do. And we, we just want to, what we're trying to do is shift the paradigm of how people look at this particular shooting discipline in, in our community. Well, it's something you said on, on day one uh, that, that really was cool. It was like you're, you're taking the mystery out of it. Right, you're you're really you're teaching people that it's not like a mysterious art where you guys are like magicians on the back end, you know, like <laughs> yeah, right. ah, I didn't just make that steel move, the, you know, the like, sniper, the sniper dust, yeah, right? <laughs> you're over there doing wand stuff right. while you're, you know, there's there's no magic to it. It's it's there's tons of math, science, physics, and really like a lot of uh, the physiology stuff. That's that's what I started getting. And, and once you, I mean, most of these rifles nowadays can do what we were doing all week, uh, but it's the shooters that are the, the variable that cause such an issue with yep. it. And dude, it's super cool, like all week long, just really starting to find my way with it too. And, um, and I've been doing it for, I don't know, seven or eight months and really enjoyed it enough to come out, take a class, learn more. And like you were saying, like, um, like, you guys are all about progressing, right? Becoming, 
you know, always being students and always pushing yourselves to learn new things. And I, I think that's something a lot of people are missing in, in our community too, where a lot of instructors just, they sit with what they know or they make up some shit, I don't know. And, uh, and it's sorry to see, but that's something that drew me to you guys as as an instructor, as a shooter that loves to learn and loves to reach out and find new things, like it was, it was definitely a good fit. And um, and something I, I think I mentioned in one of the videos that I did too was, Kalen reminds me of Frank Proctor, right? Like straight up, he's a precision Frank Proctor. And um, and if you guys don't know who Frank Proctor is, go look him up, Frank Proctor shooting. And uh, he is the most chill pistol rifle shooter I've ever met one of my best mentors one of the, the teachers I had learning starting up and uh, and Kalen's just the precision version of him that, that's what I saw and when I was vetting you guys as instructors for my own self right what am, what am I gonna invest myself in it was one of those big things that really drew me in chill very mindful very very much part of like hey you're connecting to the rifle which yep. is what Frank talks about, connecting to the sights, connecting to the gun, and really working through that. So it was really cool to see that and and to to experience it firsthand. So I mean, I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys putting on some fucking good classes. Yeah, I mean, we we were uh, we were stoked to know that you're coming out, and it's always it's I think it's always great to have another teacher from the space come yeah. in and, and and hang out, and you know we get a chance to share uh, our experiences as teachers and talk about the things that that are that are small small differences right yeah it's shooting right it's shooting it's the fundamentals of marksmanship it doesn't really matter if it's a pistol a carbine or a bolt gun yeah. right it's all the same stuff um, and sometimes you just have to come at things in a different way in the sense of like hey with a pistol we need to focus a little bit more on this aspect of the fundamentals in order to get consistent accurate results versus a bolt gun you know we can we don't have to focus so much on that we can divert our attention to other things to bring it all together yeah and i think it's just it's one of those things that people look at and go okay well this is just a it's a it's a it's a rifle okay well, no there's there's so much process that goes into extracting all the potential that you can from that thing yeah. and i mean these things will shoot themselves right mm -hmm. like a great rifle will outshoot us all but it still won't shoot itself yeah it still needs human input no, I loved it, and, uh, and I like the in-depth portions that you went through uh, to show like the science that went behind it, right? Uh, once again, demystifying some of the things that I thought or that I heard, yeah. and it was it was really cool. I, I definitely enjoyed so much of this class because of so many different aspects. It's hard to pinpoint like one, like oh, I like that. I like there's so many. Things. It's hard, man. Like there is so much stuff to cover, right? Like we talked about, like. Philip and I like want like there's a certain level of want that our that we want our students to achieve by the time they leave, but <laughs> that's not always a reasonable expectation. So. Well, I think I think you can relate to as an as an instructor of being passionate about being I wouldn't say instructor being a teacher, right? Of of mm -hmm. seeing the light bulb click, and really one thing that Kaylin had taught me when I transitioned from uh, teaching at sniper school in the Marine Corps to civilians is like it's like hey man, you know you have to scale back of what you want them to know because I just want to data dump my whole brain, right? And, right. and, and give that all to them. But I sort of realized that I was doing more harm than good, right? Because yeah, you're overloading. Exactly, yeah. data overload. Um, so then try to figure out what to scale back and change the question around like, okay, well, not really, what do I want to teach them is what do I want them to be capable of at the end of yeah. this one day or four days or whatever, right? What, what's the goal? Yeah. 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 No, absolutely. I just, I want people to be able to leave after those four days and have some, not only, I want them to have the confidence that they can go forward on their own and, and like be able to continue to unlock their potential. Like we shoot the drills that we want to give you guys the ability to have diagnostics mm -hmm. on and to be able to self-diagnose, right? Yeah. So it might seem like we go super depth in depth in the weeds when it comes to fundamentals of marksmanship, but if I, you know, if I explain in great detail the reason why this connection between the stock and your body is so important, then you're gonna know, you're gonna know that this is something I really, really need to pay attention to. And if this happens, this is the result that I get. Exactly. Right? And it's, it's kind of that that mantra of um, you 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 teach 
to make that student into a teacher almost, right? Like, so students are, or teachers are meant to be there until you don't need teachers. And it's not to say you don't, you'll, yeah, that. you'll like learn everything in the world, no, but if you're on a subject and you're trying to learn something, well, your teacher shouldn't be teaching you things so that you have to come back to them. It should be teaching you things so that you can diagnose and progress even on your own because now you know the whys behind it. Exactly. And I'm a huge fan of that. And I, once again, another reason that I really, was really excited to come out here and uh, and why like I, I spent my own money, I flew out here, I drove over to Yakima, you know, I stayed in that weird hotel. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and it was all because I wanted to like, I wanted to learn more. And, uh, and it's once again to show people that they're, the only limitation is what you put on yourself. For sure. Oh, it's themselves, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it's a testament to your character, Don, honestly, because in the, the world of instructors, like you said, um, and this is why I kind of want to get away from classifying us as instructors, right. uh, because the instructors, they regurgitate, right? Mm -hmm. And they hold themselves high on a, on a pedestal, you okay. know what I mean? Uh, where teachers, teachers understand that they're always students, right? And they care about how that information is being delivered to the students. Right, exactly. And you're making that information your own. Yep. You yeah. know, like you're, you're saying, okay, well, I learned this from this individual. Okay, well, uh, in order for me to, to truly be a teacher, I have to sit with that piece of information and say, okay, well, if I talk about it in this exact same way, not everybody's going to understand that. Yeah. So I have to be able to break that down even further into different terms and different ways to relate to different people. Yeah. And that's how we that's how we raise the bar, right? That's how we push forward. That's how we go beyond the status quo. Yeah, I call it building your own flavor. Yeah. Right? yeah absolutely, yeah. I like ice cream. So I, I usually talk about it as all right, you get like let's say you get chocolate from one guy, right? You, then you get, you know, vanilla from somebody else, you get some strawberry, you get some mango, you get all this other stuff and you take pieces of it and you put it in your own blender, right? And that's right. your flavor, right? That's your flavor on shooting. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. that's, that's how I look at it. And, cool. and I usually explain that to students and they're like, oh, and that's why I encourage students to go out to different instructors, go yep. meet other people, vet them, because you don't want to go and spend your money on something that's crap. Right. But definitely take a chance and go go out and find some stuff. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good it's point. But how, so so for, for your guys, you know, that's a great question. Kayla and I talk about this all the time. And, um, you know, we put in our podcast, like vet your instructor. So how, how, how did you go about vetting us? So started out with what I got was recommendation, right? So a uh, SWAT sniper told me, hey, Kalen's the fucking mom. Go check him out. You, you probably want to take this class if, if he came down here, right? And COVID kind of pushed that class to November. So I was like, okay, well, then I'm going to go to Kalen, right? <laughs> I'm going to go out there. Um, but to choose to go was, was a completely different monster. Right, knowing somebody or knowing just their background only tells you a small s snippet of their story. Yep. But it's it's listening to what they have to say, vetting what they have to say. Right, like hey, trust but verify. Right, if if somebody says something like oh oh that's sciencey, well science is easy to go ahead and go look it up. Right, if, hey, <laughs> if they say like your eyes do this when this happens, then go check it out. Right, do right. your own research for it. It doesn't hurt. Um, you may learn something else, right? And and, um, and then the other thing was uh, start listening to the, the podcast that you guys have, start following you guys on, on social media, seeing what you guys uh, were about, really, right? And, and is that is that type of person going to mesh with my type of person? Sure. And, dude, it was, it was probably like maybe the first podcast in where you guys are just talking about modern uh, modern day sniper and talking about being a modern day rifleman and I was like you know what these dudes have something and I literally went from the first one all the way until I think you guys are on 30 right now Dang. and Dang, man. and it was Thank you. obviously not in one day <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't have that kind of time but every drive I had which I had quite a few drives I was listening to it um, whenever I was on a flight to a new class going to go teach I was listening to it trying to like pick up on on different things that you guys had to put out and it was it, not only a learning aspect to it because there's a lot of information in those like information to the point where I had to like pause it rewind it go back or pause it wait until I got to my hotel room because right. I had to write some shit down <laughs> and like I tried doing it at like a red light one time I was like this isn't enough time I gotta keep it paused and um 
and really being able to soak in that kind of info was was awesome because I'm so new to this it was like being a new student in anything and I see it all the time like with guys that come to night vision classes or pistol or rifle classes and they are so overwhelmed with information yeah. and I'm like listen just take it down to like the bare minimum basics in these little tiny things and as you grow you're gonna stack things on top of that and I, I like to teach based off of skill stacking right I teach you this small portion and then on the next thing you're gonna implement that next thing yeah. and and in a skill stacking method and um, and I had to go learn how to teach yep. right like learn how to do that to make it make it viable for students yeah that's really important in this game you know now that you've seen the process mm -hmm. and all the stuff that you have to have yep. it all line up right and when one thing does not line up that's gonna cause a miss absolutely and, and so we we really try to teach as systematically as we possibly can and and we always try to evolve the evolve the curriculum too like yeah. you know I had somebody tell me that you know if I was teaching the same thing uh, a year later um, that I'm you know I'm already kind of behind the times yeah. and I think that's true for I think that's true for for some things but not everything in the sense that like you know fundamentals are always gonna be that what they are and those are always gonna have to be touched on and communicated but as far as like a progression within the community when it comes to application of those skills application of those fundamentals with different pieces of equipment or different ways of doing it like we've evolved so much from shooting off of tripods mm -hmm. to now where we were before to now it's crazy right it's just like it's like there's certain techniques that we just don't use anymore because yeah. there's better ways to do it uh, faster ways to do it more efficient ways to do it absolutely so, it's the same way with any other industry which is the the really cool part about it all yeah. is that there's there's so many similarities and that's why once again super excited to come out and kind of see you guys and how your flavors were on things and uh and put that portion of flavor into my damn blender yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and it was it was really cool yeah. so i i look forward to like getting home and getting back on the range well it sounds like uh sounds like we're gonna link up again in florida down there for the advanced yeah. course in Amokali. so absolutely that'll yeah. be a lot of fun yeah. so you're gonna be able to take all of these skills and pour on the coals man yeah so that's what that class is gonna be all about it'll be fun super stoked yeah super stoked and, and I, I both of you guys are coming for sure yeah. or no i think so yeah. yeah yeah cool awesome well guys uh that was a little snippet into modern day sniper and uh and a little bit of like what i experienced and how i felt about the class and vetting your your instructor and stuff and uh if you guys want to know more about them go to moderndaysniper.com and they also have their summit going on which i registered for it is awesome i've only gotten three videos in or three interviews in but there are a ton more that i highly recommend because it, the the names just attached to them just start to to breed information uh, and the knowledge that you're going to get from it without even having to leave your, your house or your living room or your car or whatever it is that you're listening in on. Uh, just be safe listening. <laughs> <laughs> but appreciate you all watching and, uh, and hope this was helpful. Take care. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Amen. man. Appreciate it. Absolutely.